It's nice to have new devices early. Hey guys, how are you doing? Today we are talking about new present sensor from Sonoff. And, well, it's probably not what you think. First of all, let's talk about the Agara FP2, which was released a couple of months ago, and uh, a lot of people got really excited about it. I didn't cover it, even though I have one in here, because I always struggle to find a decent use case. It's not to say that millimeter wave technology or radar technology for presence detection is bad, but the tech is cool application, well, you need to have a really good scenario. So with that in mind that I actually have Agara FP2 at home and I can compare it to Sonoff presence sensor, the SNZB, I need to read this, 06P, I decided to talk about this device a little bit more because, uh, well, it's not what you think and uh, you probably should be watching this video if you want to buy one of those. As the product name has P letter at the very end of its name, it indicates that this is part of the new Zigbee release series from Sonoff, and I already covered a couple of devices in this video, so if you're interested in building up your ecosystem with uh, Sonoff devices in Zigbee, then go ahead and check it out. So what is this? This is a presence sensor which will use uh, radar-like waves links to detect presence in your room. So the main advantage of this technology is that it's very, very accurate. I mean, seriously, this thing, and calibrated properly, can detect you breathing easily. So this was the first thing I got excited about. The second thing was that, unlike Agara, which uses Wi-Fi, this is Zigbee 3.0, which means it's going to be easy to implement in your home automation or DIY home automation, right? Okay, let's talk more. What you get in the box is a sensor which is powered by USB Type-C. You don't get a power supply, so you'll have to figure out how you're going to power it, but the sensor itself is pretty simple. It's a... Uh, I don't even know how to describe this shape, but it has a magnetic base which is useful. That base can be glued in using 3M tape to anywhere you want, as long as it's in a range of your power supply. Pretty much everything really you need to know. Oh, there is a button, it's a single button, you're gonna only use it for pairing and then you're gonna deploy it and forget about it. The cool thing about that magnetic base, it gives you absolute freedom in orienting this thing because you can fiddle with it, you can have it horizontal, you can have it upside down, you name the position, it is possible. Another exciting point before I come raining on your parade is the pricing, because you can get this for $14.80, so just under $15 at launch, which is very attractive price point comparable to something like Agara FP2, which was ridiculously expensive. So where is the catch? To explain the catch, we need to log into Ewilink account, so let's get started. But for that, we need to connect this to my Ewilink account, so I'll show you around. But first, I need a hub. Now, I do have a Zigbee Bridge Pro, which some of sent me as well. I flashed a couple of them with Tasmota 2, so if you're interested, I'm gonna link this in a corner for you. But uh, for now, I just wanna demonstrate the usage in Ewilink and talk about the limitations of the sensor. Now, you can either use the Zigbee uh, Bridge Pro, you can use uh, NS Panel Pro as well, and compatibility with iHost will be coming up shortly too. The pairing process is pretty standard. Press the button, hold it for a couple of seconds until it blinks. I still don't understand why the LED is inside the button that you're gonna press and cover. But anyway, it pairs without any problems and you're off to the races. Now, inside the app, I quickly discovered that, well, this looks like a Zigbee PR sensor. Now, that would make sense because they already have a presence sensor which uses more traditional infrared technology to detect things. But on the surface, those two things look almost alike. And here comes a little bit of disappointment because the card interface for this device is pretty, well, standard. I got used to the fact that in Agara I could track multiple targets in a room, I could detect the direction and distance from the sensor, and there were lots of different options to trigger things, which was exciting, even though I didn't really have a proper use case scenarios for it. And don't get me started on working around the room with triggering different lights. Who does that to their lights? Come on, I mean, like, I like my rooms being bright. But anyway, back to the sensor. 
So I quickly discovered that the only options that you can use this with is, well, discovering if someone's present or not. Okay, there is more, because if you're going to use the automation panel, you can also discover when someone's present in a dim or bright room, but since there is no thresholding for what's dim and what's constitute bright, their option is a little bit useless. Okay, but we have this technology and it can detect distance with insane accuracy, except in the settings of this sensor, well, I only had three sensitivity options, low, medium and high. Switching over to the next option, showing you the timeout of the detection, the minimum detection timeout is one minute which makes it, well, really confusing. I understand that these sensors have to settle down a little bit to discover what's around them and be effective, but a minute timeout on a sensor that can detect your breathing, that's a bit low. I reached out to some of asking about it. They said that they will be working on decreasing that timeout and maybe providing this as an experimental function, but as it stands for now, well, it's not an option. So what I get in my hand is a technology that is underutilized. Fortunately, like I said, it doesn't cost that much than a regular PR sensor. Now, and that brings me to the point of managing your expectations because, well, it all comes down to that. I know that if you are looking for a cheap replacement for Agara FP2 that is capable of connecting to your Zigbee to MQTT, uh, you're going to be let down because this is not it. This is, doesn't come close to what Agar FP2 have to offer. However, if you are looking to combat the HK scenarios in which the standard Zigbee PR sensor wasn't really working, whether it's because of the false positive in the areas that are often illuminated by sun, or just, you know, having a presence detection that actually works when you become stationary for a while, this device can actually fix this, and considering its price, well, it's actually not that much to ask for. Right now, I don't know if they're going to introduce any more features to it or add any more functionality, so that remains to be seen. But from the hardware standpoint, it's reliable, I didn't notice any problems, you are using it for a couple of days, and I would trust this with human detection. And now that I stopped playing with EvoLink account, it was time to actually test this sensor with something else. And I have this. This is uh, Amazon Echo Hub. It supports Zigbee 3.0. So I was curious how well it's going to work with this. I promptly connected it to the Alexa app, and after a couple of moments, I was able to actually enjoy the sensor itself. On a side note, I also discovered that I can add new Zigbee devices by a voice command, which was nice, because all I had to do is just shout, hey, add new device, press the pairing button, and it would complete the setup automatically. So moving forward, it's going to be one of my favorite ways of adding devices to Alexa ecosystem. There are a couple of things to note in Alexa app. There weren't any settings for sensitivity of this or timeout, but I could control the timeout, especially the person not being present in a room using routines. So that would that was basically okay. Another thing I've noticed that this sensor is super sensitive. Even when pointing at wall, it will still detect you in a room. Somehow it knows I'm there and I honestly have to leave the room for the sensor state to change. I was also tempted to try a Tuya Hub, but my Tuya Hub is on the way, especially I've got a new one that's going to support Matter, so I'm super excited to that part. But since it's working with Alexa, I am pretty sure it's going to work with Tuya as well. So I know what you want. You want me to get rid of this and switch over to Zigbee to MQTT and try it with Nodred or Home Assistant. I'm not going to try it with Home Assistant because I don't use it, but the principle is the same. And I actually run into a couple of problems. First of all, I've seen this device being supported on the Zigbee 2 MQTT page, so I thought, like, I'm just going to plug it and play and see what happens. So I thought my, maybe my installation's outdated, I've updated it, and again, it wasn't supported. Which left me scratching my head, because I know Bearded Thinker has the same sensor and tried that with uh, Home Assistant, and that worked for him beautifully without any setup. So I was definitely missing out. It wasn't up until I reinstalled entire Zigbee to MQTT that started to work and being detected as a real device in my ecosystem. So yeah, it was a little bit messy, but now I have new installation, everything's working, and that device was working. So what do we have out of Sonoff Presence Sensor in uh, Node-RED? Well, turns out not much. 
occupancy state, true or false, and the link quality, that's it. Although this device also acts as a router, not just an end device, so that is nice because it's powered, so great. And since I'm playing with Node-RED, I was really keen to reproduce exactly the same behavior as I've seen in Ewelink accounts, in which I could create a small widget in a dashboard that would tell me a current state of the sensor and the duration of that state. So after playing in Node-RED for about half an hour, I came up with this little widget and it works great. The flow itself isn't particularly complicated either. It just intercepts the payload. It uh, marks the time it was actually recorded. Then use, uses a couple of functions to calculate the duration of the first interception and the current time for both absence and presence detection and submits that with corresponding icon and the color um, value change for the button to create this small dashboard. The best thing about it is that this Node-RED flow will actually work with any sensor that um, submits payload as true and false, whether it's a son of present sensor, PR, or even a contact sensor if this is something you would like to try. In addition to that, if you connect it to a database, you will be able to create a heat maps of your presence in that room, which is uh, taking this simple automation to the next step. So if you're super interested, go to the description of this video, you're gonna find out uh, where to download the sample flow and try it for yourself. All right, guys, I hope I've explained to you when this sensor is enticing. I mean, when you want to replace a traditional PRR and you don't expect the GARA FP2 functionality and when that sensor is underutilized because at the end of the day, it has cool tech, but not so cool software behind it. So take it or leave it, it's down to you. I'm going to include the link to this sensor in my description of this video and some more information in my article. As for now, hey, you know how it works. I've got plenty of different videos in the pipeline, so consider, I'm not going to explain you that. You know how YouTube works, I'm, I'll leave it to you. But anyway, there's a couple of social media links down below if you want to start the conversation. Thanks so much for watching. See you then, bye.